the saying goes that every dog has its day. I'll explain what that means. For nearly the last 20 years, we've been working on a technology to allow people to invest in sports teams like they would invest in the stock market. In the beginning, it was just a simple concept of why not? I had a background playing around with day trading in the late 90s, and I had some experience helping build a sports book software company in Costa Rica. That opened my eyes to the appetite for investing or betting or whatever, putting your money on, on your sports knowledge. Well, 20 years ago, that was nearly 20 years ago, the idea was really hatched in uh, right around the time of 9-11, 2001 actually uh, was the beginning of it. It seemed like a simple enough idea. Um, I had a good friend that was a programmer and thought, well, it's just a matter of writing some code and piece of cake. Almost 20 years later, here we are, and while the market is alive, it's been a real struggle to try to get anybody to pay attention to it. The first time around, we built it in Costa Rica with the, the beta going live in 2003 and the main uh, platform going live in 2004. The problem then was that gambling was, uh, offshore gambling was the big thing, and we being located in Costa Rica just by chance, not by design, because that's where I was living at the time after leaving the sportsbook software company. Uh, it was really hard sell. Where are you in Costa Rica supposedly running a legitimate sports stock market? You know, what's the story there? Uh, we took it upon ourselves to divert a, a vast amount of resources uh, from, the, from the market when it was running towards regulation because I knew that if we had something which appeared to be the case because it was taking off like a rocket, that uh, we'd have to have legal certainty. So we spent a lot of money on that in excess of a million dollars uh, just in direct expenses, hiring the top talent, uh, former government officials, uh, lawyers, et cetera, to find a way forward. So what happened there is that we were told because of the legal condition at that period of time that in spite of maybe finding some legal certainty in the financial regulations that we may collide with the anti-gambling provisions and be subject to attack by the Justice Department. So the decision was made to create a parallel product uh, that would fit within the, the rules, would fit within the present regulation uh, closely, as closely as possible, mimicking the all sports market model, uh, but would fit. So we, we took off on that path with the idea of bringing that market alive and then winding down the, the platform that we had and migrating the customers and the account values over. Uh, we had a deal in place. We worked on for several years uh, with a, an exchange called United States Futures Exchange and uh, we're ready to go live and then the 2008 crash hit, utterly destroying not only our relationship there because the company went broke, but costing us all of our financing and causing all kinds of other problems that I won't go into here. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, it collapsed the marketplace along with everything else in that, in that crash. So that began a, a five year from about 2009 till 2014, um, slogging through the wilderness, I would call it, holding on to just the absolute bare minimum pieces of the IP packages and such to, to not lose the work that we had put, put so much time and energy into. It was my belief that we would, uh, we'd, you know, we'd get through the other side. We had something valuable. It was just a matter of, of, of lasting, you know, however long this turndown was going to last, and then we'd come out the other side. I never dreamed it would be five years. Uh, yeah, that, that never, that was, if I would have thought it would have been five years, I don't think I would have started uh, trying to hold it together. So uh, we did get through the other side and then we got to 2014 and things were improving. The economy was improving and uh, reapproached the original team, including my partner, who's the programmer, the sole programmer behind this to reconstitute the marketplace. So that began in 2014, and we put it on a nonprofit structure. 
which incidentally is how the New York Stock Exchange began its life, with the idea to bring the market back up again, to you know work the kinks out, and then to go back to the original plan. So that was uh, that was moving along fine. The we had a, some really fortunate circumstances. My partner here is in the film business, so he had some friends that were that are uh, you know famous people that came alongside of us and and helped us get the media attention uh, and all that. So so we we got the market restarted and. Uh, we're moving along, and the idea was to once again, you know, show what we have, and then return to the um, to the original idea, which was to complete the regulation and then turn this into a legitimate market. Now, this time around, the um, the gambling situation changed with with the re with the revocation of PASPA. Uh, that leaves the decision of whether sports gambling is legal or not legal to the states. In spite of messaging you may have heard publicly, it's not enabling legislation. And the Wire Act, which is uh, still in place, is actually prohibitive at the federal level. But that's, that's another topic. The point is the public thinks that it's okay. So gambling became competition again for us in terms of trying to get our proposition uh, taken seriously. Now, this time we're in California, not in Costa Rica, which has made that a lot easier. But the noise of sports gambling was drowning out, uh, drowning us out. Basically, uh, everybody saying gambling was the future, and you know, now that it's going legal and all that, it was just really, really tough to get anybody's attention. Well, <clears throat> that was the case up until about 90 days ago. So, I'm sure you're well aware, as everybody in the world is, of this situation with uh, COVID-19. Um, never in my wildest dreams did I see uh, this happening because it, it did two things, two main things. Um, it crippled, first of all, it ground stopped all sports, uh, and that's still the case, um, you know, team-based sports. And it stopped all gambling on those sports, obviously, because there's no games. So the push-pause, you know, having to contrast and compare our proposition to gambling is no longer the case because there is no such thing as at this moment in time. So the competitor is non-existent. So we are now in a moment where our proposition as a financial marketplace for sports teams is real and is getting its own traction. Um, we're having now approaches to us that I've never seen before asking us what we're up to here. So uh, it's definitely a moment in time. Um, you know, the idea behind any sort of a financial market, uh, stock market or otherwise, is utility. You know, it needs to be useful. That's the regulatory criteria. Uh, so our, our proposition has always been, it's not a speculating tool. It's a way for sports leagues to raise capital in a new way, raise non-recourse capital, meaning that you're not going to be giving up equity. Um, we invented an instrument that allows you to invest in sports performance rather than gamble on it. So that's what gambling is. It's, it's poaching or it's po we call it poaching uh, sports performance and our product allows you to invest in sports performance. So the benefits are, are like this. Right now, uh, all the sports leagues in the world are looking for ways to, you know, keep alive, just like every individual is doing, to stay solvent. And raising capital in an, in an environment like this where you really can't tell anybody where the profitability begins because you're shut down is pretty much difficult to impossible, especially if you're on the edges, if you're not something some major league like the big four, accessing the capital markets now is, is a really tough proposition. So uh, we walk into a moment where the market is, is in need of some way of sustaining itself, not just in terms of bridge loans or you know that kind of thing, which is what the government is doing, but uh, in terms of just you know new capital influx and more importantly, uh, keeping the fans engaged in the meantime because nobody knows where the out the end of this 
the exit to this uh, situation is. So losing your fans is a, is a major concern right now um, on top of the capital requirements just to stay solvent. So that's, um, you know, we, we solve both of those problems because we allow leagues in a new way to raise non-recourse capital and to keep their fans engaged. And we know that it works keeping the fans engaged because we, we now have four, we've run this model four times. We, we started a beta in Costa Rica, then we turned it live, that's two. Then we started, we started it up as a uh, test market here, which then became, uh, here being California, became the free money, play money market. And then we put up what we call a pilot market, which is, is still basically a test market, but we call it loaned money market. It's a limited uh, real money market. So we've proven it four times. Now, now that the games have shut down, um, it's a live test because we have about 11,500 traders right now. And it's, it's actually trading some days more than it did when, uh, when sports were live. Uh, and, and that's pretty amazing, actually. So it shows that it keeps the fans engaged because our model not only um, pays di small dividend payments when a team wins, which that's shut down, but it pays on the quarter. So, so that part... Uh, the payments on the quarter, and the fact that you can just do anything. You can speculate on what you think is going to happen, right? Just watching the news and when is sports going to come back live. So the fan engagement has remained uh, even with the shutdown. And, and we now see that as a live example going on now, two, about two, almost two months. So uh, it's a very unique proposition in the marketplace. In fact, it know, doesn't exist anywhere else. I mean, we are the creators. We are the concept creators of, the, of a sports stock market. Uh, we own the trademark, the world's first sports stock market, and we were the ones that created the, the concept. There have been other knockoff attempts, but they've all failed. Uh, we're, the, we're the only one, we're the original one, and we're the only one standing. So we're in this market now where the sports world is deteriorating and uh, the need is growing by the day to both find capital and keep the fans engaged, both of which we accomplish. So where it stands now, after four series of tests, basically four separate market instances, we're shopping aggressively for the first league that is willing to test out a live fundraise. That means a completely uh, a new instance of the market um, set up exactly like a bank stock market uh, one dollar to one dollar, um, you know, a live real test of a, of an actual fundraise, and we're getting we're getting a lot of activity on that. As of I, right now, I'm, this is uh, May fourth. We have uh, seven uh, seven or eight proposals out, uh, and we're getting more interest all the time. So for us, it's 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 proving the concept works now in a um, in a need environment. Um, that's going to be key to the regulatory side of it is we need to show uh, a public case that we can step into this gap and, and actually um, rescue sports out of, out of this situation and keep fans engaged. And that becomes the material necessary to advance the regulation all the way through, you know, showing a utility in the market, basically stepping into a situation where nobody else can solve the problem solve the problem and then that will grease the wheels for us in getting the regulation finalized um, that's a dream scenario you know i've said many times over the past years that the number one thing we needed to have was a a need we needed to show that we could satisfy a need in the marketplace not not a novelty not a new way to play play around with money on sports but an actual need and now the need is system-wide I mean, it, the, the need is all sports. <laughs> it's not going looking for one because they're all in the same boat. So we're aggressively looking for uh, candidates, really what we need, and we're willing to give up, you know, not charge any fees uh, to, to put your league on our market. What we need is the news story. Because I know that once we show, it doesn't even have to be a large initial raise. Uh, once we show that, we can do this and then publicize it, and we have the mechanism to do that. We, we've got good press contacts, and we've been in the media before. 
Once that happens, then I know that the, the situation will reverse and we'll be qualifying people to list rather than looking for people to qualify. Um, as each day clicks off, the, the, the demand is growing in the marketplace for solutions. So we've kind of walked into a moment here where the market is, is intersecting with us in a way I could have never imagined. So um, what do you get from this? Uh, first, we, you know, the first person who, who signs a listing agreement is going to forever be, be known as the first one. So there's like perpetual bragging rights uh, for that uh, forever. So I know between the pressures being placed on the teams to find capital, uh, for example, we're looking at g getting into XFL's bankruptcy to see if we can pull them out of that. Um, <clears throat> you know, once we get the first one um, in the news, that's it for us. That's that's the ball game for us. So we we will um, we'll we'll raise the money for free. We won't charge any fees. Uh, you get 100% of the proceeds, and then a perpetual revenue stream because we split the the income that we get from commissions. We split that 50/50 for eternity. So uh, I know that it's just a matter of time before we find that uh, lead candidate. We actually have one right now, I think is very, very, very close, um, but it will come. So if this is something you're interested in, if you want to raise non-recourse capital, um, you want to, you know, show a new technology to your fans, you want to have recurring revenue, and you want to keep your fans engaged, uh, especially during this time, which nobody knows where the end of it is, then please look in the description here and... Um, Go to the link in the description and fill out that pre-qualification form, ASM League Partners, and somebody will contact you um, with more details and actually create a, a custom presentation for your particular circumstances. So thank you for your time and um, stay safe out there. Bye now.